Have you ever wondered what happens when you press the red emergency alarm button on the train or pull the green emergency door release handle? Well, wonder no more. First and foremost, I'd like to welcome you to Train Driver Vlog number seven, right here on Dad Rail with me, Richard Evans. What really happens when you pull the emergency alarm on a train? Just before I get into that, you may remember in the last video I made a couple of weeks ago, I asked you to identify what this symbol that should be on your screen now means. Lots of great answers in the comment section, and I will give you the correct answer at the end of this video, and also give you a new sign to identify, so stay tuned for that. So I want to start this video by saying that my thoughts go out to all the people involved in the uh, attack at Parsons Green Station the other day on the tube train, and it's due in part to this attack that I wanted to make this video. You always hear when you're on stations and trains to remain extra vigilant to report anything that you may see or hear that's that's suspicious. But I think as railway enthusiasts, we have an extra special duty of care um, towards the public. A lot of us spend lots of times on trains and on stations, and you can often spot when something isn't right. So I just want to reiterate that message. If you're on railway premises, you see something, you hear something that you don't think is right, then report it to staff because it really, really could be life-saving. In most cases, when you report something, it will turn out to be nothing. But I personally would rather deal with 100 false alarms a day if it means that the travelling public are going to be protected. So I'm going to ask you to do something now. It's an announcement you would have heard on the stations hundreds of times. See it, say it, sorted. It's the British Transport Police number 61016. Pause this video, put that number in your phone now. 61016. You never ever know when you're going to need it. You could be out train spotting, you could be travelling to work, you could be on a train, you could see something and you may need that number. So pause this video, put that number 61016 in your phone. British Transport Police number. If you see anything suspicious, hear anything, text that number. I'll say it again, 61016. And once you put it in your phone, comment, see it, say it, sorted in the comment section below so I know you've done it. So let's assume you're travelling on a train, you're with your family, you're going to work, you're on a train going somewhere, going out somewhere nice for the day, and you see a piece of luggage that isn't yours and you believe it to be unattended. So what do you do? First instance, you should just ask people in the carriage if the luggage is theirs. Just approach them, just be friendly, just say, excuse me, is this luggage yours? What you shouldn't do is rely on someone else to do that, because if everyone relies on someone else to do that, it's never going to get reported, and that potentially becomes a problem. So having identified an item that you deem to be suspicious or unattended, or you see suspicious behaviour, try to move yourself and others away from the situation. If you're on a train, try to move to a different carriage. If you're on a station, then move to a different part of the station. And inform a member of staff as soon as you possibly can. Each situation will depend on the best way to contact uh, a member of staff. Like I said, you can use the British Transport Police number 61016, which of course you all have in your phone books right now. Um, or if you're on a station, contact a member of station staff there. Now, if you're on a train and you're about to pull into a station, I would advise wait till you get to the station because it's the easiest and best place to deal with the incident. But you could be on an express train, you could be on a, a Virgin Pendolino on the West Coast Main Line, you could be half an hour, 45 minutes away from a station. If you can't find a member of staff on the train, operate the passenger alarm, or as we say in railway speak, the PASCOM. Now, contrary to popular belief, especially on more modern rolling stock, when you pull the passenger alarm, the train will not come to a grinding halt. On um, older trains, the passenger alarm used to be linked directly into the uh, to the brake pipe. So you'd pull the passenger alarm, it would dump all the air and cause an emergency brake application. But that isn't the case on more modern rolling stock. So if you pull the passenger alarm on more modern rolling stock, the driver will hear an alarm in the cab that sounds something like this. Now the brakes actually won't activate for around about 10 seconds. It is different on different types of rolling stop, but the average is around about 10 seconds. And what the driver can do once the alarm goes off is press a button or press a pedal to actually override the alarm to prevent the emergency brakes coming on full stop. Each emergency alarm point is fitted with uh, an intercom and the driver will talk to you over the intercom. Often it will light up on the intercom uh, saying speak to driver so you know that you're connected. And when the driver speaks to you, they'll establish what the problem is and then deem the best course of action, whether that's to stop at the next uh, station on the route, whether that's to stop at the next book station, or whether it's just a false alarm, because there are cases uh, when the passenger alarm gets operated when it's a false alarm. Nine times out of ten, it's someone in the toilet who thinks it's the flush button. That happens more often than you'd believe. In the case of suspicious items, all railway staff are trained 
in a procedure to assess whether an item of luggage, whether an item that's been left is suspicious and needs the attention of authorities or whether it's perfectly innocent. Now for obvious reasons I'm not going to go into um, what those procedures are right here on the internet. So just to summarise, when you press the emergency alarm button on more modern rolling stock you'll be connected to the driver, the driver will speak to you and then ascertain the best course of action. Now, this being the railway, of course, there is one exception to that rule, and that is when the train is leaving a station. If the train is leaving a station and you press the emergency alarm, the rule book mandates that the driver must put the emergency brakes on immediately. So, if you see anyone stuck inside a door or fall between the train and the platform, so tempted to talk about DOI right now, driver only operation, but I'm not even going to go there. If you do see someone fall between the train, press that emergency alarm. The driver has been trained to stop when leaving a station if the emergency alarm is activated. In fact, on London Underground trains, they actually have markers uh, on the end of the platform, so the driver knows how much of the train is left in the platform. So we've spoken a little bit there about the red um, passenger alarm buttons, but I just want to talk about the green emergency door release handles, known in the railway industry as egress handles. If you're on a train and you're travelling at speed and you pull one of those green handles, the doors are not going to come flying open so you can jump out or get pushed out at least not on the trains I drive and I think it's the case on most rolling stock. If the train's above a certain speed, I believe that to be five miles an hour, what will actually happen is that an alarm will sound in the cab, very similar to the passenger alarm, in some cases even the same alarm, and the driver will receive an indication uh, that the door's been, the emergency door handle's been pulled, and they'll lose one of the cab systems known as interlock. Interlock's a system uh, that tells the driver basically that all the doors are closed and locked. The difference um, between a passenger alarm is that with a passenger alarm, the driver can override that indefinitely. They could override it all day long if they so wished. With an emergency door release, they can only override that for 90 seconds. I believe it, it varies on different types of rolling stock, but on the trains I drive, it's around 90 seconds that that can be overridden for. The idea of that is that the train can be stopped in a more suitable location. You need to stop the train as quickly as possible, but if you're on a high viaduct, in a tunnel, in a cutting, on an embankment, you want to try and get clear of that area to stop in the most suitable location, preferably a station platform. There is also another procedure that when the emergency door release handle is pulled and the doors have opened, immediately you press the red button on the radio, you make an emergency call on the radio which stops all trains in the area. So if someone has fallen out the train, all the other trains are going to be stopped. So the message I wanted to get across um, from this video is one that you've heard over and over again and it's if you do see something on a train unattended item on a station something suspicious tell a member of staff and if need be do operate the emergency alarm button 61016 of course you've got that in your phones now tell the emergency services it honestly it could save someone's life I can't reiterate this enough like I said at the beginning of the video railway enthusiasts we spend a lot of time on trains and on stations and we're an extra pair of eyes uh, for the staff Incidentally, I was travelling on a new um, Thameslink 700 unit the other day. I'll say no more about Thameslink or 700 units. <laughs> but I noticed on their trains, they've actually fitted the emergency uh, the emergency buttons behind like a brake glass panel like you have on fire alarms. In part, I can see why they've done that, and I agree with that, because activating the emergency alarm does cause delays. And you do get so many malicious applications of the emergency alarms. So they're trying to discourage people from using it. But at the same time, I think that probably discourages people from using it that genuinely should use it, that need to use it. But uh, I'll leave that for discussion in the comment section. Would you feel comfortable operating the emergency alarm? In my last video, I asked you to identify what this sign right here means. And I had some great answers in the comment section below. Some good answers, some that were slightly wrong, some that were bang on. So the answer to that is, it means, and I'm just reading this off my iPad, it means that no signal post telephone is provided, but the presence of your train is indicated to the signalman. On some lines, few and far between now, particularly um, absolute block lines, there were no track circuits fitted to the line. The, the signalman only knew your train was in section because they'd been told by the previous signalman. And if you were stopped at a signal, you'd have to carry out a procedure known as train detained at signals. You'd have to inform the signalman that you were at that signal. Most signals were fitted with telephones, Sometimes you'd walk to the signal box, sometimes you'd sound your horn just to alert, that the, sig alert the signalman um, that your train was being held at that red signal. So this symbol means that although there's no signal post telephone provided there, the presence of your train is indicated 
to the signalman. Incidentally, these signs are cropping up quite a lot more now, especially in the London Bridge area where it's just been re-signalled. Because the radios on the trains are so good now and every train is fitted with a radio, it's being deemed unnecessary to fit every signal with a signal post telephone. So you're finding these signs a lot, lot more in uh, track circuit block areas, which mean exactly the same thing, that there's no signal post telephone, but the presence of your train is indicated to the signalman. I just want to add that a couple of people in the comment section had confused the symbol with this one. Yes, this is just a bad Photoshop edit of the last picture, I know. Um, but this sign actually means more or less the complete opposite of the last one. This sign actually means that a signal post telephone is provided, but you should only use it in an emergency as there's insufficient clearance for you to use it safely. What that means is that your train stopped at a signal, they're telling you not to get out the cab because the clearance isn't sufficient for you to do so safely to use the telephone. But it is provided and you can use it in an emergency. So of course, we're gonna set another sign for you to identify. This one right here. I'll give you a little clue to this. People who live in the southeast have probably seen this a lot more than people in other parts of the country. So, see if you can identify this one. Answers in the comment section below and of course I'll give you the correct answer in the next vlog. So I'd just like to thank you all for watching. If you do have any questions about being a train driver or about getting into the profession or there's any topics you'd like me to cover in future videos, then please do contact me on social media. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And as many of you will know who comment on my videos regularly, I always try and get back to you and I always try and answer your questions. So yeah, any comments, questions, suggestions in the comment section below or on our social media channels that should be on the screen somewhere around there. Just like to thank you for watching guys, um, doing really well on the subscribe account, so thank you so much for your continued support. If you have liked this video, do hit that like button. If you haven't, hit the dislike button, but please tell me why so I can make changes in the future. And uh, of course, if this is the first video you've seen by me, do consider subscribing to Dad Rail for more mainline, heritage, model and European railway content. Also, share this video and tell your friends. Thank you for watching.